Huh? Okay, but today we're honored to have with us um, Reverend De Demet Jenkins, and she is from the museum. And she's, um, our events team had the pleasure of meeting with her while the museum was still under construction and uh, when we went into scouting this location. So she's part of the reason we're here. And it is my honor to introduce her. So I'm gonna tell you just a little bit about her. We don't have anything else to say yet, right? No, I think we're done. Okay, just checking. Just look pretty. Oh wait, no, that's gonna be me. <laughs> that's how to remember, she's the pretty one. <laughs> okay, all right, so, um, I'm not putting myself down, uh, you religious scientist. I heard you all go, oh. oh <laughs> Wait, Robin. I, I know the truth of who I am. Robin, look over here. We look exactly alike. I have many doppelgangers in, the, in this uh, uh, organization, and we're one of them. Okay, here we go. So, back to where, I, where we are, back to center. So, Reverend Demet. She, Reverend Demet Jenkins, Jenkins, she's a faith-based program consultant um, from the International Museum of African American Museum. And she was born in Char in Ch Ch I asked her how to produce, pronounce everything except this word. She was born in France. France. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, all my people. <laughs> she, was, she was born in France and raised in Charleston, South Carolina. She received her Master's of Divinity degree at the DeWitt Proctor School of Theology in uh, Virginia, and she also was ordained in 2011 and an Associate Minister of the Royal Missionary Baptist Church in North Charleston, South Carolina. She's the granddaughter <clears throat> of the late Asa Jenkins, who is a civil rights activist from Johns Island, South Carolina, and he was a leader and a businessman and a community organizer, and he was the founder and the moving spirit of many organizations that he helped improve and build. Um, Demet returned home to Charleston in 2016 and is very excited to be a part of building this world-class museum, the International African American Museum in her hometown and continuing the legacy of her grandparents, Janie and Isaac Jenkins in serving the community. So it's our honor to welcome her to the stage. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Man, I love it, I love it, I love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, let me tell you the name of the city in France. <laughs> it's Chateau Roux. Chateau Roux was an Air Force base. My parents were military. So I was born in France. My older brother was born in England, and my middle brother was born in Massachusetts, so he's the weird one, okay? <laughs> so, but I am so honored to be here tonight um, bringing greetings to each of you from the International African American Museum that's here in Charleston, South Carolina. It has taken 23 years to build this world-class museum. And so I am excited that some of you will be able to see it on Wednesday and others will come at other times, but we welcome you to the museum, we welcome to you to Charleston with God's love, joy, and peace. And I am a Gullah Geechee gal, yeah. proud of it. You know, sometimes people say, well, you sound a little proper, say, let me get with my people. You'll hear that Gullah Geechee come on out of there. It's just natural, it's just natural. So we bring you greetings, not only with God's love, peace, and joy, but of sweet grass, red rice, Spanish moss, and I'll double clap. That's what we're known for here in the Gullah Geechee Corridor, that double clap. So you'll hear a little bit of that when you hear Crystal 
Haywood on tomorrow singing those Gullah Geechee songs. So that means you got to get that clap right now. Can't be off the beats. So you got to learn it while you're here. So we welcome you to Charleston. Um, I met this group, this wonderful group, three years ago when they came to Charleston and wanted to do a site visit. And there was just concrete walls then, just concrete walls. So they had to be imaginative about what was coming into that space. And so now it's, we have reached that point of buildings and centers and ex exhibitions. Um, we have a Center for Family History where we do um, ge uh, genealogy research. And we have research assistants that will work with anyone around the world, because we do it virtually, that can sit with the genealogist as many times as they like to do their lineage, their family lineage. And we encourage people to do that. When you come to the center, you, we have a story booth, so people who want to tell their stories orally, because sometimes that's all we have is the oral history that we have to pass down. So we have a story booth that you can go in while you're there and do recording. And we can send that recording to you as well. And then we keep that for our uh, database so that when anybody is looking for uh, family members or doing their lineage, some of that history is there. One of the things I want to share is when you think about the obituary, when you're writing the obituary, the obituary is a historical document, okay? So tell the person's life story. Oftentimes we begin, they were born to Mary and John, and then we go straight to their adult life. We have forgotten about when they were five, when they were 12, when they were 19, and when they were 25. Tell the story. This is the one document that gets passed down from generation to generation. And so how are the generations after us going to know about the loved one if we don't tell the story? So treat the obituary as a historical document. Tell the person's history and story. You know, here in Charleston, we'll often will say they were born in the Charleston, I mean, they, were, they attended the Charleston County schools. Well, what school was that? We don't know the name of the school. Now, if you don't know the name of the school, that's OK. But if you know the name of the school, say it. If they were raised in California and, and, and uh, grew up in Chicago and then landed in Charleston, that's what you say, right? Because if we're going to trace the legacy, we got to know where people were, OK? And then the last thing about the obituary, you know how grandmama them and papa them we raise other people's children. Okay. <laughs> we raise other people's children. That's because they, they might have been family, they might have been neighbors. And so because they were a part of our lives, we include them in the obituary, which we should. But what we make the mistake as we include them as the children. And if there's ever any issue around uh, property and you list the person as a child, then that, that person becomes a child. So if there's ever heirs property issues or legalities, then now you have another issue calling someone a sibling that's not a sibling. You can still share who they are and the importance of them in your life, but just say a loving family member or a, 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 con a heart connected loved one. So that way, if there's ever any legal issues, they don't get caught up in that. So just remember that. Um, so on behalf of our president and CEO, Dr. Tanya Matthews, and our board of directors, our staff and volunteers, we are honored to have you all here in Charleston. And we are even more excited to have you come to the museum. We look forward to you going throughout those exhibitions. I tell you now, wear soft sole shoes or sneakers. There's a lot of walking, okay, on the outside and inside. So I just want to give you that heads up. Bring you a bottle of water. Bring you a little snack as our cafeteria is not open. So make sure you have a little something something in your bag, okay? 
So uh, tomorrow you're going to have Crystal Hayward, who is one of our Gullah Geechee uh, songwriters, evangelists. She is outstanding. And again, she's going to sing those Gullah Geechee songs, and she's going to have a choir with her. And you all are expected to sing and clap with them. Amen? Amen. Now I'm going to be watching. So I expect y'all to be there. So Charleston is a beautiful place, and I don't know if you'll even have time to visit, but we have uh, Spanish mosques, we have praise houses, we have a praise house that's still built and active. It was built in the late, uh, early 1900s, and it still has the wooden floor, and it still has a tin roof, and it's called the Moving Star Hall Praise House. And we had Moving Star Hall singers. So when you get a chance, you go to YouTube, look up the Moving Star Hall singers. And they have traveled around the world, Smithsonian's everywhere. But that is right here on John's Island, in the country, off a dirt road, still existing, Moving Star Hall. So here's a little taste of a song that came out of Moving Star Hall. And this will be how I greet you from my Gullah Geechee culture. That's all right, that's all right, that's all right, it'll be all right. Since my soul has a seat up in the kingdom, that's all right, that's all right, that's all right. In the kingdom, that's all right. Welcome to Charleston. Yeah. 